So today I would like to go through uh, learning how to ID grasses using grasses and rushes of Maine. Now I'm talking specifically about the key that's in, in this book, however the features that I will talk about would be used for uh, other guides also. So the first thing that the key to Poaceae asks for is your inflorescence type. So just to clarify, inflorescence is, is basically the flowering part of the plant. So from the first spikelet, which I will explain a little bit later, to the end. So each one of these that you see in front of you, these would be the inflorescence. So the question that's asked in the key is, is it a spike or spike-like appearing unbranched, or is it branched open or open at maturity with branches readily visible? So I have a few different species here, and the ones on the right here, these ones are all unbranched. So the this this one here, especially you can see in here, so the, the spikelets are attached directly to the stem. And in the case of this one here, you can't even see the stem, but uh, the spikelets here are also attached directly to the stem. The ones on the left hand side, these ones are all branched. And, and in most cases, it's, it's pretty obvious that you can see, you know, this one is maybe a little bit less obvious, but you can see there's a branch here and another branch coming off here. And in fact, each one of these little clusters has is also branched there. Okay, so I'm a little bit closer here to try to show you a bit more what a spikelet looks like. I've talked about that already. So each one of these is a spikelet. And within the spikelets are florets, which we'll look at closer in a, in a little while. So looking at this bigger one here, looking from the side, you can kind of see a little bit better. Each one of these here is a spikelet. And again, these are directly attached to the main stem. And so these would be uh, considered unbranched. This one here, you, here I'll just try to pull off one of the branches and you can see again it's more branched. So each one of the, this, this one here would be a spikelet. This one here would be a spikelet. And here again even more branched. So it might be difficult to see but there's many spikelets even on this little branch here. So it's really important to distinguish what exactly is a spikelet? And we'll talk about that now. So I've removed one uh, spikelet from one of the grasses just so that we can look a little bit closer at the features here. So the thing to note here, a few things, whenever you have a spikelet, these two structures here at the very bottom, these are called glooms. And there's always glooms at the bottom <clears throat> of the spikelet, so that will help you determine where the spikelet starts. And then we look within the spikelet, and that's the florets. So here we have one, two, three, looks like a fourth and maybe a fifth floret that started, that formed here, but didn't, didn't uh, turn into a seed. So in this one here, what we actually see is the seed already growing so there's no flower parts on this one. So just to look at one of the actual florets. So the floret is made up of a lemma which is this outer structure here and the palea which is the inner one. Generally you won't get asked at least in uh, grasses and rushes of Maine about them. The only thing that you may need to distinguish is at times they'll ask if there are awns on the glooms which takes us to our next structure. These are awns here. So they're so extensions, long, thin, like this, and they can occur on the glooms or they can, they can occur on, on the lemma. So we're gonna move here to look at a few other florets that we have here that are spikelets that I've taken off. Just to note this one here, which you can't really at, at this point see the glooms, but this would be 
one one floret here or what in this case it's already forming its seed the other three and you can see the difference in size you can see the glooms on the bottom even this tiny one these first two leaves sticking out leaf like structures here in this one here these are your two glooms and here you can see one gloom here and the other gloom here and then you've got the spikelet so on this one for example we would have one two three four five six seven maybe eight or nine florets within one spikelet this one here again there's your two glooms one two three at least four florets within the spikelet and this one you looks like there's three you would probably need a magnifying or a microscope to actually make sure but it looks like there are three florets within this spikelet So just one more thing to note uh, that you often see on grasses, again depending on what stage they're at, but what you see on these two grasses are the stamens. So these ones are actually flowering at this point. So in this case, this, these white structures, these are the stamens. In this case here, you'll see the purple part here. Again, if you use a magnifying uh, glass or a microscope, you'll also be able to see the pistil, but it is it is quite small and difficult to see. So now that we've gone through uh, different parts of the of the spike and spikelet and floret, we will continue on with the Poesia guide. So the second column is florets per spikelet. So we already talked a little bit about that and all of these. So in this case, it's one or two or three or more. So all of in all of these four cases we would have three or more florets per spikelet. So the next uh, column is whether there are ons and these could be ons either on the lemma or palea. So this first one here obviously you've got ons here. The second one it's kind of hard to see but it actually does have ons on the end of the uh, florets. This third one no ons and the fourth one again, no ons. So again, you can see the importance of using some kind of magnification when you're looking at the uh, at these features. And finally, the Poesia guide asks for the average spikelet length. So I've got a ruler here, and generally there's three categories: less than five millimeters, five to nine millimeters, or greater than nine millimeters. So you can see at least these first two ones would definitely be the greater than nine millimeters. Uh, this one here, we'll just uh, look at it under the ruler. So it would probably also be greater than nine. And this final one, and again, this, this feature is excluding ons, and this one would be less than five millimeters. So the final thing we're going to look at is some vegetative characteristics of the grass. So the first thing to look at here is the width of the blade. So you can see here with these two grasses that I have in front of us that um, obviously quite a different uh, width. So measuring the blade is often something that's asked for in keys. Um, just aside that the grasses that tend to be in our lawns are these narrow leafed ones and some of the hay grasses or the ones that you'll see along the side of the road tend to be these wider ones. Also looking at the parts of the vegetative uh, part of the plant. So this here, this darkened portion, this would be the node and the node is where the leaf starts. So from there, this part here that sort of follows or encloses the stem. This is called the sheath. And then from the sheath, the leaf blade comes off here. So those would be the parts of the leaf. So another part to look at is where the leaf sheath meets the leaf blade. And if here I've pulled back the leaf blade and you can see hard to see here but there's a little kind of structure just here and this is called a ligula and the ligula here can be membranous or it can be hairy 
but that's another important um, diagnostic characteristic of some grasses. And finally, I'd like to show you the, this structure here is called an oracle. So on some grasses, again, here is your, here is your leaf um, blade and where it meets the sheath. Sometimes there's these structures that encase or come around the stem, and this is called an oracle. So that should give you enough information to begin your journey on learning to identify grasses. As you can see, it's not all that different than identifying wildflowers or trees. You just need to know uh, the features that you need to be looking at. You often need some kind of magnification and a good guidebook to follow.